Hello everyone. Welcome to our lecture on international business and trade. Again, I am your course specialist, Duffy Mark and Cabana. So, let's uh, get started. You know who is this guy, right? So, this is Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple. So, we start our discussion by reading the case study of how the iPhone is made. Apple's global production system. So we need to understand the very, very concept of doing international or studying international business and trade by delving into the story of Apple. So in its early days, Apple usually didn't uh, look beyond its own backyard to manufacture, right? You know that it's devices, right? A few years after Apple started making its Macintosh computer back in 1983, um, Steve Jobs bragged that it was a machine that was made in America. As late as the early 2000s, Apple still manufactures many of its computers at the company's iMac plant in Elk Grove, California. Steve Jobs often said, that he was as proud of the Apple's manufacturing plants as he was of the devices themselves. By 2004, however, Apple had largely turned to foreign manufacturing. Remember, 2004. So, the shift to offshore or doing the manufacturing internationally or somewhere outside Elk Grove, California, that the shift of its production and assembly reached its peak with the iconic iPhone, which Apple first introduced in 2007. The iPhone contains hundreds of parts, an estimated 90% of which are manufactured outside California. Advanced semiconductors come from Germany and Taiwan, memory from Korea and Japan, display panels and circuitry from Korea and Taiwan, rare metals from Africa and Asia, and the gyroscope used for tracking the iPhone's orientation comes from Switzerland. So Apple's major subcontractor, the Taiwanese multinational firm Foxconn, assembles half of all the iPhones sold in the world today at a huge factory in, guess what, or where, in China. So Foxconn also has factories devoted to iPhone assembly at several other locations, including Brazil and India. Another Taiwanese-based uh, company, Pegatron, also assembles iPhones, iPhones for Apple at a factory in China. Apple still employs some 80,000 people in the U.S. No? It has kept important activities at home, including the product design, uh, software engineering, and marketing. Furthermore, Apple claims that its business and other 450,000 jobs at the USA or at the U.S. base suppliers for example, the glass for the iPhone is manufactured at Corning's U.S. plants in Kentucky. Analog devices in Massachusetts produces chips that enable the iPhone's touch display and a Texas instrument plant in Maine makes electronic components that go on in the iPhone. So the point here is that Apple started, Steve Jobs started his company in California, no? But eventually, in the early 2000, he started to outsource or do it offshore, perhaps because of cheap labor and then other factors like everything can already be cheap because, case in point, no, in that case study in China, it was mentioned too. 
na anything that they want is just in another block of China. Everything that they want. For example, they want a consultant for this. It's just there because the population of China and the expertise of China are already peaking no? during those, uh, especially today. Everything is made in China, as we joke. Right? So, that was the, the, the shift that happened on how the iPhone is made and its global production system. So, with this case study, we understand that there's that necessity for certain companies like Apple to go offshore. Again, uh, the study of um, commerce or business always goes back to maximizing profit while lessening the cost of production so that the investors, the stakeholders will be pleased and will be happy. Yan naman talaga ang end goal eh. Kumita. At kumita ng mas malaki. Mas better yung company. So, na-discuss ko na din sa, sa inyo last time itong um, very basic concept on our study of international business and trade. This, this word. And again, I need to emphasize this when we want to fully understand what international business and trade is or the study of international business and trade. So basic ulit, what is globalization? It refers to the shift toward a more integrated and interdependent world economy. Shift toward a more integrated and interdependent world economy. Tignan nyo naman yung picture dyan no, sa side. Reconnected. It is a term used to describe how trade and technology have made the world into a more connected and interdependent place. It also captures in its scope the economic and social changes that have come about as a result. Diba? It captures it. The economic and social change, changes that happen because of that. People got the opportunity now to, to work here in the Philippines while their employers are outside. No? Case in point, our BPO sectors. It has several facets including the globalization of markets and the globalization of product pro, uh, and the globalization of production. So what does this mean no? Yung yung globalization of markets and the globalization of production. So what is globalization of markets? Nahin natin to. It refers to the merging of historically distinct historically distinct and separate national markets into one huge global market place, marketplace, falling barriers to cross-border trade and investment have made it easier to sell internationally. Example, yana, the product of McDonald's, Coca-Cola, again iPhone. So historically, distinct sila, eh. separate sila sa national market or sa international market. McDonald's is in the US, iPhone is in the US, and even Coca-Cola, no? So, ang sinasabi dito, ay, sorry, ang sinasabi dito, merging, na historically, dun lang sila, at separate sila, napunta na ngayon into a global scale. And everyone loves McDonald's. Everyone drinks Coca-Cola. Most of the people, no? Most of the people wants to use most of the people want to use iPhone. 
So cross border trade na. That's the effect of it. No, it the, the, the globalization includes the globalization of markets. So hindi na siya specific into that that place only. Ano pa bang ma pwede nating example diyan no? Na dati international lang naman siya pero ngayon nandito na sa Pilipinas. Marami, marami tayong maiisip no aside from McDonald's and Coca-Cola. Baka humaba tayo wag na. Lang. So it has been argued for some time that the tastes and preferences of consumers in different nations are beginning to converge on some global norm thereby helping create a global market. True, right? Kasi yung taste natin and seeing McDonald's or Coca-Cola or seeing iPhone parang nagbago na din we think like Americans we think like we eat like the Americans no we spend like the Americans nagbago na yung taste and preference and taste and preference is one of the market forces the shifter no of demand so if you happen to go to abroad and you don't understand that case in point in Japan or in Korea or somewhere in Asia that you don't understand their language or English is not prominent in their place, you will understand and it will be your comfort when you see 7-Eleven. That's part of globalization of markets. So, what is globalization of production a month? Kanina, market. Ngayon, what is globalization of production? So, it refers to the sourcing of goods and services from locations around the globe to take advantage of national differences in the cost and quality of factors of production such as labor, energy, land, and capital. By doing this, companies hope to lower their overall cost structure or improve the quality or functionality of their product or of their product offering, thereby allowing them to compete more effectively I think just this year or last year, no? Kailan ba na-announce? Ito, itong nasa news dito. Sa Philippines to eh. Honda to halt car production in the Philippines. So, this plant had operated, anong nakalagay dyan? Since 1992. But was running under a fourth of capacity. So, parang, ang balita ko, lumipat sila sa Vietnam ba o Thailand? can't barely remember no doon na sila again labor energy land and capital yung case study natin kanina sa iPhone no nag-shift offshore si Steve Jobs going to China because it lowers the cost and they need everything and what they need is already there so ibig sabihin founded siya in this specific country yet pwede mo na siyang i-outsource or i-produce globally because of some factors that will be in the advantage of the company over the long period of time. Right? So, that's the difference of globalization of markets and globalization of production. So, what are the drivers of globalization? What, what drives it? Right? First, the declining trade and investment barriers. It has now become the free flow of goods, services, and capital. Wala nang, ano eh, wala nang barrier eh no? sa pag-trade natin internationally. That's why it's called international business and trade. And nag-decline yung barrier at saka yung, yung, yung pag-trade natin. No more heavy resistance or barriers to doing or selling, or producing, or outsourcing globally. So, international trade come, uh, comes in, foreign direct investment comes in, or goes to other countries. So, what are these? International trade now occurs when a firm export goods or services to consumers in another country. They're exporting. Case in point, in the Philippines, we are exporting uh, bananas no? to China, to other neighboring countries. That drives globalization. 
foreign direct investment of course when a firm invest resources in business activities outside its home country like Steve Jobs Apple sa ano na sila China mostly yung Honda cars kanina nandun na sila sa Thailand or Vietnam yung mga BPO companies na outsource nila yung employment dito sa Pilipinas second drivers of a uh, second driver of globalization is uh, the role of technological change sa din talaga to no so technological advances in communication look at that the icon there did this one this one communication Next, transportation, transportation technology, including the explosive emergence of the IoT or the Internet of Things, have drastically driven globalization. Tingnan nyo lang yung mga icon na yun, you will get it. The role of technological change. Diba? So, that's what drives globalization. So, I were studying globalization as part of our, you know, parang pinaka-core doon sa nangyaring international business and trade. In our study of the international business and trade. So, to sum it up again, what is globalization? It refers to the shift toward a more integrated and interdependent world economy. It is a term used to describe how trade and technology have made the world into a more connected and interdependent place. Look at that icon, the globe. It also captures in its scope the economic and social changes that have come about as a result. And it has several facets including the globalization of markets and the globalization of production. So we end our short lecture studying really the the core of international business and trade what drives it and all it's the concept of globalization so thank you for watching and i'll give further instruction on what we can do after this lecture uh, video so in the next lecture video or synchronous class maybe i don't know what would be our schedule um will be i'll be choosing concepts that are good to study no, from the reference book so we don't need to go to chapter one two and three but i'll just pick up concepts that will be useful in our study of on international business and trade that said again thank you good night if you are watching this at the night or good morning or good afternoon it depends on your time frame because this will be done synchronously i'll see you again next time bye